The Indian Ocean is an immense maritime space of great geopolitical and geoeconomic importance. It is a crossroad for sea trade that connects the advanced economies of the East and the West. At the same time, there are also many factors that threaten its stability. These are often closely related with the international dynamics of the Asia-Pacific to the point that the two areas can be considered as a single reality. I'm your host Kasim, welcome to another KJ vid. In this video we will discuss the geopolitics of the Indian Ocean. But just before we begin, this video has been sponsored by Audible. Audible is a website where you can download and listen to audiobooks. With thousands of titles to choose from, it's certainly worth a try. Give it a shot by clicking on a referral link in the description, which will give you a free audiobook with a 30 day trial. Using our link will also help to generate a small commission for KJ Vids, which we need to make more videos. On its western part, the Indian Ocean touches the shores of the vast African continent. This creates a peculiar mix of opportunities and challenges for coastal states like South Africa, Mozambique, Madagascar, Tanzania and Kenya. Thanks to their position, they can easily reach important economic areas such as India, the Middle East, Europe and the Asia Pacific. Engaging in maritime trade with these regions could provide a major economic boost to these African states and improve the living conditions of their citizens. In addition, emerging powers like China and India are heavily spending in Africa to access its much needed natural resources and exploit the opportunities for high investment returns. Yet in the case of China, this also raises concerns. While African states welcome Chinese investments as they come with no legal precondition on the respect of civil and human rights, some worry that its economic penetration might result in political leverage and in a form of economic neocolonialism. There are also two states whose situation is particular. The first is Ethiopia, the powerhouse of the Horn of Africa. As other states along the continent's eastern coast, it can greatly benefit from international sea trade, but unfortunately it is a landlocked country. This largely explains the recent deal it reached with Eritrea to settle the long-standing conflict. Turning Eritrea into a friend would enable Ethiopia to access the sea and engage in maritime trade along one of the busiest routes in the world. As a matter of fact, the Red Sea is an obliged passage for ships sailing between Europe and Asia. Ethiopia has even expressed its intention to build a navy, which is a clear sign of its seafaring ambitions. The second peculiar case is Somalia. In theory, it is also poised to take advantage from its position on the Indian Ocean, but in practice it is a failed state ruled by armed groups where the central government has not enough power to pursue such kind of maritime policy. This raises the issue of the threats to sea trade along the western shores of the Indian Ocean. Somalia is part of the problem, as it has become a hub for piracy. The difficult economic conditions have pushed many Somalis to start attacking cargoes navigating along the country's coasts. This became a serious problem that prompted the international community to organize a military operation to patrol the Somali waters and combat piracy. These efforts succeeded in securing the area and in reducing the number of attacks, but as long as the socio-economic conditions of the coastal population do not improve, the risk of piracy will remain. Then there are two important checkpoints that connect the Indian Ocean with the Mediterranean via the Red Sea, which can be considered as a peripheral area of the Indian Ocean putting it in communication with Europe. First, the Bab el Mandeb Strait, and secondly, the Suez Canal. Both passages are essential for sea trade, and any interruption would have a major impact on the global economy. Located to the north, India is certainly the main regional player. A large and fast-growing economy, it is one of today's most important rising powers and its influence is growing worldwide. New Delhi considers the Indian Ocean as its own maritime space, a vector for power projection and economic growth, but also an area to be preserved from the intromissions of hostile powers for the sake of national security. India can enormously benefit from its position by protracting towards the ocean midway along the vital east-west sea lanes, and in fact it is already taking advantage from it. At the same time, by building a powerful navy, it can extend its power abroad and protect its interests. As a matter of fact, New Delhi is concerned over the presence of foreign actors in the Indian Ocean, most notably Beijing. 
China is indeed investing heavily in the region on the basis of its Maritime Silk Road plan aimed at creating a string of ports to sustain trade with Europe. This is of central importance for China's economy, which relies on sea trade for exporting goods and importing hydrocarbons. But some consider that the real objective of the project is to extend its influence in the region by economic means. In a context of broader Sino-Indian rivalry, New Delhi worries about Beijing's presence in countries like the Maldives or Sri Lanka, considering it as a potential threat to its security. Similarly, India also sees unfavourably the China-Pakistan economic corridor that will connect China with the ocean via the port of Gwadar. Again, there is also a strategic choke point to consider, the Hormuz Strait, which connects the Persian Gulf with the Indian Ocean. This passage is vital for tankers carrying Middle Eastern oil to Europe and Asia and any interruption would have catastrophic economic consequences. Unfortunately, this is not a remote event. In case of a serious standoff between the US and Iran, the strait would soon become a major flashpoint since Tehran's deterrent strategy is largely based on blocking the strait, which it can do with relative ease due to geographic reasons. To the east, the Indian archipelago and Australia separate the Indian Ocean from the Pacific. Similarly to Somalia, the waters around Indonesia had become infested with pirates in the recent past. And the phenomenon has been reduced due to multilateral military and development efforts. Yet if the living conditions of coastal populations deteriorated again, the problems may arise once more. That said, Indonesia and Australia benefit from their position between the two oceans. It allows them to project their power in both directions, to reach the large European and East Asian markets, and finally to access Africa with its resources and its potential for investments. Indonesia is particularly relevant in this regard. It is another emerging economy with a great potential and it virtually controls all the major straits connecting the two oceans, Sunda, Lombok and most importantly Malacca. Indonesia's growth is largely due to its position on these sea lanes and Singapore has based its incredible wealth upon it. Again, these passages are essential for maritime trade between Europe and Asia as well as for the latter's energy security and will become hotspots in case of war, notably between the US and China. If the US Navy closed them, it could seriously harm the tenor of China's economy. At the same time, they were also essential for American allies like Japan, South Korea and Taiwan. Meaning that the US will use its naval power to ensure no hostile power blocks the straits. The eastern part of the Indian Ocean plays a fundamental role for maritime security and the importance of the juncture between the two oceans is leading many scholars, analysts and policymakers to consider them as a single maritime region, the Indo-Pacific. The Indian Ocean is extremely important for states in East Asia because it represents the necessary passage to reach Europe and the security dynamics of the Indian Ocean and of the Asia-Pacific are closely related. China's new Silk Road initiative, the forays of its navy in the waters of the Indian Ocean, the Sino-Indian competition, the free flow of oil from the Gulf and piracy in Indonesia are all strategic issues that tie the two oceanic regions. This explains why the concept of Indo-Pacific is also taking importance in American strategic discourse. The economic and security dynamics of the two areas are so intertwined that they may be considered as a single space. Other powers are applying the same logic and this is having practical consequences. The quadrilateral security dialogue uniting the US, Japan, India and Australia indicates their willingness to strengthen their political and military cooperation to face shared security challenges like the rise of China and it represents the emergence of the Indo-Pacific as a political and strategic reality. Many scholars believe that the future is Asian, which is even the title of a recent book by Parag Khanna. But Asia's rise largely depends on trade with Europe and on oil imports from the Middle East across the Indian Ocean. As such, Asian states have major strategic concerns in this area. China, Japan and South Korea need to keep the sea lanes open. India is an emerging power whose influence is growing across the world via the sea. Indonesia is the pivot connecting the Pacific and the Indian Oceans. The United States, the world's primary security provider, is facing many challenges in both oceans and is committed to preserving the freedom of navigation. Moreover, the interests of the various stakeholders in the area are sometimes colliding, such as in the case of China and India. 
As such, with Asia's importance growing every year in both economic and political terms, the Indo-Pacific is also gaining primary strategic relevance. That's all for today guys, thanks for watching another KJ vid. We would love to hear your views in the comments below. Please also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can produce more of these geopolitical reports and to help us keep independent from political influence. That's all for today guys, thanks again and see you next time.